Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the best movies that I remember back when I was growing up. It's just memories of pirate adventures over the open ocean and epic set pieces of pirate boats and magical sea creatures. It's honestly really amazing all of the great things that I remember about this movie. There's a bunch of great choreographed sword fights that always keep you on the edge of your seat and villains that were honestly too memorable. Villains that are memorable and made in videos on YouTube even to this day that I believe that this is and honestly will always be a hidden gem amongst the movies that come out today. All of the reboots and the sequels and the requels that everybody ends up constantly churning out to the audience today. It's very much a shame. Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest really does check all of the boxes that you really need to do to make a sequel done right. It has great characters that not only have motivations for themselves to build on for character growth within the story, but also a great plot that finds its way to intertwine the characters without it being clunky or forced or full of conveniences just to get the plot moving again. This epic world building that's not only immersive for our characters, but immersive for us and really kind of forces us to go into the journey with somebody like Will or Jack Sparrow or Elizabeth and really dive further into the world of piracy. Interesting. Without giving too much away, Pirates 2 picks up immediately where we left off with our protagonist Elizabeth Swan and her soon-to-be husband William Turner. And due to uncertain circumstances that carry on from the first film, Commodore now Lord Beckett of the East India Trading Company now sends Will Turner on yet another pirate adventure in search of Jack Sparrow and his compass in which he possesses. We're not given the importance of the compass or why he needs the compass or what the compass even leads to. It's just a little bit more mystery that the writers decided to give to us while we go through the journey of Will and look through his POV. On the seas, we pick up with Jack Sparrow back to being what he was born to do, being the captain of the Black Pearl. Again, we're filled with a variety of different characters returning from the first film, all in a different character aspect compared to where they were in the first one, meaning that all of the characters in these, I guess I would say trilogy, because I don't really count the fourth and the fifth one, definitely get character development and it's not only stationed to our main protagonist and our main antagonist. And when Jack returns to the Black Pearl after being captured from the first movie and sentenced to death, they immediately pick themselves up with a new adventure and a new goal that they need to set forward, meaning a key that Jack Sparrow needs to find. With Elizabeth now being robbed of her wedding night and robbed of her freedom by being locked in a jail cell waiting for Will to return from his mission, honestly feels as if there's no other choice but to try to put her pirate skills to the test that she picked up from the first movie, but as well as her natural beauty and charm, and forces her way out in search of her beloved fiancé and to help him face his mission that he was tasked with, knowing that the world that she'll be stepping into is far different and far more dangerous than the world that she grew up in. And with motivation set and stakes forming right in front of our eyes, the plot finally kicks in with the introduction of our new antagonist, Davy Jones, a pirate that is only heard in legend and that shakes even the most dangerous and well-known pirates of their time to their very core. And another great aspect about this movie is that you can see that with every interaction that our characters have, either directly when Will Turner talks with Davy Jones himself, or when Jack Sparrow met him for the first time, or the way that even honestly our side characters would talk about him indirectly. When a blood debt is called upon for Jack Sparrow to pay to Davy Jones, there may seem that there are even bigger stakes at play than we even knew about. Our protagonists and antagonists are now thrown into a situation that not only affects each character in their fates, beliefs, and genuine makeup, but even has grander ramifications for their future and the entire pirate world as a whole. The reason why I say Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest is a hidden gem and I guess I would say a relic of its past is because movies genuinely aren't made like this anymore. And for me, the main standout was definitely Elizabeth. Elizabeth Swan is a strong female character in every which way. A character that is constantly changing and building and adapting to the ever-changing world around her and the circumstances that she finds herself in in the sake of just her love for Will Turner. 
Elizabeth uses her education and her wits as an upper class lady of Upper England to her advantage when it suits her, as well as using her beauty and grace to charm herself into the good graces of our characters like Jack Sparrow and Lord Beck. And I would say that's all done without having the pretentious writing of today's age where male characters are constantly belittled and act as if not themselves just for the sake of empowering the female character. Elizabeth is a strong, suitable character throughout the entire trilogy and is honestly one of my favorite parts about this specific movie myself. I would say Will Turner also gets his fair share of character development. A character where we're constantly having the audience look through his POV because, to be honest, I think that's kind of what Will is. Will Turner is a character that's in way over his head and thrown into a situation of an immense pirate world in which he's just now starting to learn the inner workings of. In an up-and-coming country and a government in the midst of building an empire and the interpersonal connection that he has with the leader that's on top of this building empire, the reintroduction of his father who was thought to be dead all of these years to just find out that he's been a sea-bound and disfigured crewman of the Flying Dutchman bound to endless years of servitude under the antagonist Davy Jones, Will Turner works as a character because he embodies the audience. We're thrown into a world that we know very little about such as himself and it's always more immersive to watch a movie through the POV of a character like that. But that always leads us to the characters that make this movie work the most, which, in my opinion, is definitely Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones. The dynamic between Sparrow and Jones is made evidently clear the moment his name is thrown into the story. Jones is someone to be feared, and as our main character watching Jack Sparrow, it's portrayed to us, the audience, as well. When Jones makes his first appearance on the destroyed ship, victim of a monstrous beast that has been hinted at throughout the film, it's honestly absolutely gripping. He's a menacing character that shows that he doesn't play around, mercilessly killing the surviving crew if they refuse service upon his ship until Will says the name of Jack Sparrow. And with that, Davy Jones' demeanor completely changes from a cold, merciless villain from the actions he was doing in front of Will Turner at the moment, but a smart and cunning and terrifying villain, not only for the actions in front of Will, of what he can do or leash upon you in the future. And when I say that, of course, I'm talking about the Kraken. I don't really get too many monster movies nowadays. It's not like I'm somebody who's grasping for them, but I definitely know that there is a market and an audience out there that is disappointed with what we've gotten. I would say the way the Kraken is done in this film is nothing less of incredible. Slowly hinted at throughout the first act of the film, never even making an appearance on screen, but building up the tension for its inevitable appearance. The first scene of the Kraken is breathtaking, and I did a lot of research on this and read that it was mostly done practically, which is incredible within itself. It's huge and has unimaginative size that can bring down a ship in a matter of minutes, and the disgusting stench of the hundreds of corpses decomposing on its breath, and with it at the command of Davy Jones, it makes them both foes that our heroes will definitely struggle to overcome, and it's an interesting dynamic watching them try to overcome that struggle. I would say also with returning additions of characters like Commodore Norrington from the first film, it's really incredible how the film manages to bring it all together into one coherent plotline. And the best part about this film is that it always remembers what it is. It's a pirate movie. The way that the movie is filmed with a dirty and grimy film to it, well with some spoken and some unspoken rules, as if we were living in a civilized criminal world filled with magical creatures and disfigured and unruly pirates that are just going through their lives day by day because that's the life of a pirate. It's an incredibly fun time with epic swords fights and imagination that simply isn't in blockbusters that we have today. I mean, I can't even remember when the last pirate movie that I've seen that wasn't attached to this franchise. And I know that we have four and five, but I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to try to milk out this franchise for as much as it's worth, especially with Disney Plus nowadays. But if you haven't watched this movie in a while, I definitely recommend that you watch it again. If you like this video, definitely subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't like the video and didn't agree with these words, 
I certainly appreciate you for making it this far. I'm very interested to see when was the last time maybe you guys watched this movie or maybe you guys will now just go check it out after watching this video. I would say otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day, dear viewer.